Hi plant friends, welcome back to Millennial Planter. I'm Marina, the Millennial Planter. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, checking out my channel, subscribe to The Plant Hood if you are not already. And today I just have a lot of plant maintenance to do. I have some plant fails and some plant successes to share with you all. So let's just get on into it. So if you missed a couple of my videos, I went away to New York for two weeks and it was a last, very last minute trip. And I kind of just, I, I had to leave my plants, obviously. Um, granted, my husband was still here. He was keeping an eye on the plants and he did, you know, he did a really good job. I only lost five plants amongst uh, over the hundred of plants that I got. So I consider that a win. Uh, but you know, I do have some more finicky plants looking at my anthuriums that don't like to dry out at all. And I honestly don't think they got watered once in that two week span, um, but that's okay. Uh, they're okay, they are recovering, none of them died. Thank the plant gods because I would have been devastated. But I do have some sad like leaves, kind of like on this Doriaki here. She was doing really well. I mean, she still is doing really well. I thought I saw a spider mite for a second. She still is doing really well. She's coming out with the new leaf that you can see right in there. And her latest leaf has gotten really big. I did have to cut off probably like two or three of her leaves because they were just really sad. She was really droopy when I came back, but like I said, she's fine. She's making a comeback. And that's pretty much like how my all, all my plants are doing right now. Like they are in that recuperating stage, still kind of sad, still have some yellowing leaves. The plant I'm most sad I lost is the Begonia Pink Minx. I'm actually kind of devastated that I lost that plant. I have been dealing really bad with powdery mildew on my cane begonias and honestly, I am over it. I pretty much beheaded all of my begonias so they're all just the stalks except for like two of them and I had to throw out at least three of them which is really depressing. I'll share my begonia tour when they were all thriving and doing really well. I'll leave that in the description down below if you want to check that out. But this is the current state that they're in now. And honestly, I'm still finding mildew spots on the canes, on the stems of them. And it's just really defeating. Um, next, I'm going to just try treating them with alcohol. I've been using the copper fungicide. I think it's by Benide, I'm not sure and just doesn't seem to be doing the trick. So a lot of people have been telling me alcohol works and that's going to be my next course of action because I just, I found more mildew yesterday. So that's been a lot of fun. Basically what happened though, while I was away, I sprayed all my begonias down really well and I left the worst ones kind of off to the side. And by the time I came back, that mildew had just like completely taken over a couple of my plants, my pink minks being one of them. And there's just, there is no saving it because mildew just travels so fast and it's only on the cane begonias, thankfully. And a lot of times it just happens from water being on the leaves, which is such a bummer. I try so hard not to get their leaves wet and yet here we are. So if you are trying to get into begonias, ugh, be warned because I went a long time without dealing with mildew and then this winter, it just, it hit me hard. If it keeps getting worse, I might just get rid of all of my begonias because it's just heartbreaking at this point and it's, it's really sad and I don't wanna deal with any more sadness right now. Next, I feel like I just can't keep up with watering my plants. Like, I feel like I just watered this Philodendron Brazil. And as you can see, she has some very curly, very yellow leaves because she's thirsty, obviously. Maybe she needs to be repotted. I don't know. I'm gonna worry about repotting another day because I'm not about to repot all my plants right now. But yeah, everything is just getting super dry super quick i know probably the heat has something to do with it but i'm just so ready for spring to come i'm over winter we haven't even had a bad winter i mean it's currently snowing right now but i'm over her spring is like less than a month away so let's just like fast forward a little bit 
and get on with the happy, warm, humid weather time, right? <laughs> now to switch over to some like happier news, I kind of want to share a propagation success. I shared in one of my videos, I started kind of doing perlite propagations and honestly, I am just in love with perlite propagations. If you haven't tried it, I'd really suggest trying it out. I see why people like propagating stuff in LECA and let's just let's just check the roots. I think she's been in here for maybe a month and two of those weeks in that month she was in water so I guess she's been in perlite maybe for like two weeks but last time I checked on her her roots were doing really well. Oh yeah that's amazing. Oh look at that beautiful fuzzy root right there. Oh, it's so cute. That is so exciting. I'm really happy about that. And then another propagation success that I have going right now is this philodendron pink princess. And as you can see, she has a tiny little baby leaf coming in. And I don't know if it has any pink in it. I don't think it does. Um, this cutting is kind of reverted, which is fine with me. I've been reading a lot about just the variegation in pink princesses and a lot of people have just been saying once you chop it, it kind of takes a while for the variegation to come back. So I don't know, we'll see how that goes. This is pretty much right underneath a grow light. It's in perlite as you can see here. She's doing amazingly well. I'm really proud of it. Also, another little new growth. I guess we're just going to be sharing new growth and plant fails in this video. I don't know. <laughs> this went from plant maintenance to new growth because I just, I wanna concentrate on the new growth and be happy and just be happy for my plants that are thriving, especially in the middle of February, right? <laughs> my philodendron gloriosum came out with a new leaf. And look at that babe right there. Oh, she's so beautiful. The leaves are gradually getting bigger. She's just a little baby. It's going to be so exciting to see where she is this time next year. Hopefully I just get some beautiful, big heart-shaped leaves. That, that will just, that will just be an amazing day. The next exciting thing, my Monstera Deliciosa finally has given me a fenestrated leaf. Y'all don't even know, I have had, I think maybe, three or four different Monsteras. Right now I have three. And I've had for over a year finally gave me a fenestrated leaf and I literally screamed when I saw this leaf and now it is just completely unfurled. But I'm just so excited. I can't wait to see what the new leaf looks like. I can't wait to put her outside this summertime and just watch her explode with new growth. Hopefully she'll give me more splits. That was a really proud plant moment. So another sort of success slash failure. This is my Anthurium, my King Anthurium, my Anthurium Vecchii. As you can see, he's just growing crazy. I can't get his leaves to just face one way. I feel like I put it underneath a grow light and then they all just sprawl out. So whatever, you know, like you do you. But when I left, he actually had just put out this leaf and oh, do you see that tear? It breaks my heart because this leaf is so big. Oof, look at that beauty. He just unfurled and it got stuck on top of the shelf because you all know I have these wire racks. So the leaf just got stuck on the wire rack and I came back, I took it off and obviously like he had torn. But still, honestly, it is a beautiful rippled leaf. He is chiseled, he is defined. I wish my stomach looked like this. <laughs> also, he's actually put out a pup for me, which is really exciting. You see this little baby? This little baby right here, that's his little pup, his little baby. <laughs> I feel like none of my plants really produce pups. Then my Pilea, like I've had this for well over a year and it's just now giving me one little baby so I just think that's so funny I don't know what it is about my plants they'll grow perfectly fine and beautifully but it takes them forever to produce offsprings <laughs> here's my pilea might actually be even a little root bound so I'm gonna have to pot her up oh actually there's another baby in here 
Oh, there's two babies. There's three babies in here. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> and I guess the last two updates I'll share is this action, this Trebiana. I will play this clip for you right now. Finally putting out a leaf. I got this baby in September. I mean, oh! I mean, hey! And then it just fell off the trellis. It quits. The new growth just broke. When I broke this plant, I was very devastated. Uh, I got this plant in September. So it's been a few months, but look at this tendril. It is thick, you guys, like thick. This is one of my thickest tendrils on my Hoyas yet. She's getting plenty of sun and obviously breaking that leaf really just did a number on her because she said, okay, I have a clumsy owner, so I'm just gonna come back thick and beautiful so she can't break me anymore <laughs> and she even has the cutest little leaves coming in i know they're tiny they're teeny tiny so hopefully you can see those but oh, i'm so excited to see new leaves on this and to get more leaves on this plant these leaves uh she's thirsty at the moment like all my plants you guys are noticing a pattern here right <laughs> um but yeah she's a little thirsty but these are what the leaves look like. This is my Hoya Trebiana, and she's doing amazing and I'm so happy. Okay, now I'm just going to go around and water all of my plants because they are all just very, very thirsty. I'm actually gonna go around and treat my plants also, like kind of spray most of them down because as you can see, I've been also kind of dealing with thrips, but I've shared that before. I, they're like on again, off again. Some people get spider mites. I get thrips, fun times, let me tell you. So as you can see, this hamamolina, 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 one of those. I've always kind of struggled with her. I don't know why, but she just kind of like will put out a new leaf and then drop one of her old leaves. So that's kind of what she's doing now. I think she also might be pot bound because she does get really thirsty, but she has a yellowing leaf. She has this curled leaf here. I have treated her um, a couple weeks ago, but I guess I'm just gonna have to treat her again. I do have a lot of yellowing leaves on my plants specifically on like the area right behind me but that area does tend to get hit with like cold air because it's right by the door and it also gets hit with the hot heat even though i have my vents turned you can see that like the air is still hitting them that dry air so i kind of feel like that has a big factor into playing why i have yellowing leaves in that area because i check them all the time and I don't see any pests still, but I uh, hear I am. Still gonna treat them because I wanna stay on top of any sort of thrips that might be lurking because they are very tricky little, little people, bugs. So 2020 was the year I decided to try ferns and 2021 was the year I decided to get rid of that negativity in my life because ferns are hard and I don't want to have a whole bunch of plants living in a cloche. However, I do have this heart leaf fern that I have had in this, whoa, you could really see the light, but I've had the heart leaf fern in here for a few months now and she is thriving. I actually just put some sphagnum in here, a little bit of, I think, fir bark and some horticultural charcoal just to help maintain humidity. I also just planted some monstera, I think they're dubia cuttings that I've been having for a while and I... I've been struggling with them. I don't know why. It's kind of frustrating because they have grown so long, but they're just not growing roots. So I'm just gonna try them out in here and see if they do any better. But look at this adorable little Hartley fern. So she's doing amazing. She just put out that smaller leaf there. That bigger leaf has been there for a while. I was originally going to just completely replant her in here, but ferns, really hate being um repotted so i'm just gonna leave her like this and i think she'll do great hopefully these monstera dubia cuttings will do really well too 
And then also my orchid is reblooming. I definitely feel like 2021 is the year of orchids and begonias because I feel like a lot of people are talking about, especially orchids, a lot of people are getting into orchids. I kind of am like on the fence with orchids, but fun story, my curtain rod behind me actually fell and broke three leaf stalks on here, which was really depressing. But this is the one that stayed and she is blooming again and she has little buds. I would like to maybe buy a lady slipper orchid, which is just like a really cute one, I think their flowers are adorable and they look like they're kind of big, which is really cool. Um, this is my reblooming orchid. Um, and then followed by another plant fail. One plant that I just constantly, constantly struggle with is my money tree. And honestly, I'm just so over her. Well, she once was braided with four trunks. I separated her because she was suffering and my friend actually has some of them. She has no pest at all, but she's just either losing leaves or they just get like, they just come out funky or now she put out this here. And as you can see, it's just not opening up and that's just so weird to me. So, I I don't know what this plant wants from me. She's getting a lot of indirect sunlight. I water her when she's dry. She has some humidity going on. So if you guys struggle with money trees, let me know. I kind of feel like I just have a defective one. I have one with bad genes, so. I don't know. Well, that kind of wraps it up for this video. I know it was a bit all over the place. Like I started with a plant maintenance thing and then uh, I ended up just sharing like new growth and some plants I'm struggling with. So hope you all liked it. Sorry it was all over the place. I would absolutely love though if you guys in the comments would share some plant failures with me, make me feel like less of a bad plant parent. Also, I would love for you to share some successes with me. Let Let's just celebrate together in the comments and also if you're not subscribed already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join our plant hood we talk all things plants but with all that being said I hope you all are staying safe sane and healthy and I will hopefully see you in my next video bye